hello everyone welcome to wix ideas and in this tutorial i'm going to show you how you can add selectable buttons inside of your wix website we're going to be using these selectable buttons to change the state of a multi-state element and this multi-state element is going to hold three exhibitions for this particular website this is a template website and i want to be able to use this multi-state box to hold three different exhibitions and before we get started don't forget to smash that subscribe button give this video a like and also leave a comment for me in the comment section if you have any questions and most importantly don't forget to turn on your bell notification to be the first to know of our future videos now let's get started the first thing we want to do is to add a section and this is where i'm going to be adding all of my elements so let's add a new section and then let's go over to our add elements head over to interactive and here we're going to add our multi-state box if you do not find your multi-state boxes head over to the dev mode and turn on your dev mode as you can see mine is already turned on and since the multi-state box element is a velo element then that means you have to turn on your dev mode to find it so you can choose from the range of these but i'm going to go ahead and choose the first option now this is where i'm going to go ahead and design it the way i want it to be so now i have edited my multi-state box and the next thing i want to do is to start adding elements into my multi-state box so for this tutorial i'm only going to use a text element i'm not going to go too much into the design i'm just going to give you a concept of how this works so let's go ahead and copy this text element and we can come over here and paste it in you need to make sure to drag this inside of your multi-state element and we're going to go ahead and change this to first exhibition amazing now once you're done you're going to click on your multi-state box and head over to manage states over here this is where we give our state ids so click on this ellipsis and then click on edit id here we're going to call this exhibition one now the next thing i want to do is to go ahead and click on that ellipsis again and duplicate this for one and then finally for the last one as you can see wix automatically adds a plus one to the next state because it recognizes the one as an index so now let's head over to the second state from here we're going to change this to say second exhibition and then we're also going to head to the third one so you can also navigate your states with this so head over to the third one and we're going to also change this to third exhibition amazing so we are done with our multi-state box so the next part of this tutorial which is the main part of the tutorial is to add our selectable buttons now we're going to start designing first of all by adding a box element that is going to hold our buttons and it's also going to hold our vector image and the vector image is going to be a check vector image this is going to show us if the state is active or not so first let's head over to add elements let's go back to box and we can drag and drop any of these boxes so again this is where you design the box the way you want it to be so i'm going to go ahead and design mine amazing so this is the box element that's going to hold our button and also our vector image let's start off with our vector image you can head over to add and you can go over to decorative and then icons and you can choose the kind of vector images that you want to use so let's go to more icons and here there are tons of images that you can use but for me i already have two vector images that i'm going to use the first one which is the blue one indicates that the button is active and in contrast i have a green one which indicates that the button is not active so let's go ahead and click on this then add to page now we're going to add this one into our box element so go ahead and add it into your box element so the first one or the first button is going to be active by default since the first state is going to be the first active state and the next element we're going to add is our button element so go to add go to button and then from here you can choose a text and icon button and next thing you want to do is to go to the layout and we're going to make sure that this is going to be a text and icon we're going to move the text to the right and the icon to the left but then we're going to go ahead and align this to the left and next thing we want to do is to go over to change text and icon so go over here and the first one we're going to say this is exhibition one and then for the icon we're going to go ahead and change it to any kind of icon that you want for a design or a style it doesn't really matter you can just choose any one that you like so I'm just going to go ahead and choose a star for the first one and then i'm going to go over to design so this is where you design the look of your button and what i want to do is to go over to the background fields and i want to change the path to zero i'm going to go
go back to the text and make the text a black one i'm also going to change the font to a font that i'm more comfortable with and then next i'm going to go over to the border and make sure the border is set to zero i'm going to go to the corners and make sure that this is also set to zero so next i'm going to head over to the icon first of all let's make sure that the icon is set to a black color and then let's go ahead and increase this to maybe 20 pixels next we're going to make sure that this distance between the icon and the text is a bit separated so let's go ahead and add maybe a five pad into that and next we can drag this and drop into our button element so we can use this to make sure that it is aligned on top and it's also aligned to the left you can drag this across your box and make sure that this covers the entire box now this is because we want to make sure that the, whenever the user clicks on anywhere on this box they are clicking on the button you can right click on this and go over to arrange and make sure that bring to front is disabled and this means that the button is on top of everything including the vector image and the box so now we can successfully duplicate this design for the rest of our buttons since we have three states we need three buttons to be able to trigger each state so go ahead and duplicate this so let's first of all reduce the size of this you can click on the box element itself which holds everything go ahead and right click and then duplicate now you can bring this all the way to this section and we can also go ahead and right click and duplicate for the third one next you want to go ahead and click on your button elements and change the exhibition to exhibition 2 and then for the next one you want to change the exhibition to exhibition 3 amazing so one more thing we need to do here is we want this one to be the active state and we want the first state to be active so let's go ahead and change the vector image for this one and let's go to change vector image we're going to choose the grade vector image which is this which means that this is not active and also this is not active so now we have one active state and also we have these inactive states as you can see the distance between this star and the end of this box is a bit too tight so go to your design and go to customize design you can go to the layout and you can unlock this layout so this means that we are only going to control one of these layouts at a time so let's go with 10 and see if 10 gives it some space as you can see 10 does give it some space so let's go ahead and do the same for the rest now the next part we're heading to is the code section so click on this element let's begin by giving each of these elements their ids so that we can easily work with them in our code so now let's go ahead and click on this button we can go over here and open up the code panel now we're going to call this exhibition one button and next we're going to also give this vector image an id now click on the vector image and here we can also go ahead and say exhibition one vector now that we know the naming convention for each of these elements let's go ahead and do the same for the rest of the elements amazing so i've given each of these items their unique ids and now we also want to give this multi-state box its own id each of the states already have their ids as we did in the earlier part of this video but let's give the multi-state box its own id so let's just leave this as state box so this is perfect now what we want to do is we want to add an unclick event for each of these button elements so let's start with the first one and go over to our code copy the id and over here we're going to get rid of all of these comments so let's start by adding an unclick function for this element which is the exhibition one button now inside of this function we're going to also have the event of this trigger so when the user clicks on this button we want to get the event and the reason for getting the event is because we also want to add the rest of these buttons as an unclick function in the same trigger so let's go ahead and add a comma and then add the rest of our buttons So the reason for doing this is because we want to get the idea of the element that was clicked with the event so let's go ahead over here and say let target id and here we're going to get the event we're going to get the target and then we're going to get the id so this means that whenever we click on any of these we want to get the id of the one that was actually clicked so let's go ahead and log this into our console and see if we can get the id of the one that was clicked so let's go ahead and preview and from here if i click on this one you can see it shows me the exhibition 2 button if i click on this it shows the exhibition 3 button so it knows the id of the element that was clicked the purpose for checking the active id or the id of the element that was clicked is because we want to change this vector image to inactive which is this one if it was not clicked or to this one blue check if it was clicked so let's go ahead and copy the id of the first vector image 
now go over here and then we're going to get rid of this console log and then we're going to check a condition for the target id so if the target id is equals equal to the first one which over here is called the exhibition one button we're going to place it that so if the exhibition one button was clicked then we want to add a condition and the condition is that we want to be able to change this vector image dot src to a link now this is pretty easy to change all we have to do is to go back to our media manager and from there we can be able to get the url of the active button so this is the active button click on this active button here head over to file info and over here the url copy the url of this blue check now head back to your code and place in the url here now this is the source file and wix automatically recognizes this image next thing we want to also do is we want to be able to change this multi-state to the first exhibition so click on your multi-state and then head over to the state box element then let's go to our next line and add the id of our multi-state box element now we're going to change the state of this multi-state element to the first state which is called the exhibition one so this is pretty much what we want to do now else if it was not the one that was clicked we're going to go ahead and also add it else and what we want to do is that we want to replace our vector image with the inactive check so let's go back to our media manager and want to go ahead and get the url of our inactive check so let's go over here and copy this bring it back to our code and add it here amazing now let's assume that the user clicked on the second button so let's go ahead and also add this code for the second button let's go ahead and copy this condition here and simply just change the ids of the element to match the exhibition 2 button and also we're going to change this to the exhibition 2 vector and also the same thing here and most importantly we also want to change the id of our state to exhibition 2 state so the exhibition 2 state is the one here we want to change it to this one now let's do the same thing for the third one for the third button and here we're going to change this to 3 3 3 and 3 all right so let's take a look at this code and see if it works the way we want it to work so when the page loads we have our first active state we click on the next one you can see that the icon has changed and the active icon and we click on this it also changes to the third one and changes the state as well now you notice this hover effect with the border and all of that we can easily change that in the design so go back to the design let's go to design customize design and we want to make the hover to be the same as the regular so that means that it has no background and there is no hover with the border and all and we can do the same thing for the rest of the buttons let's go over and preview this and see if the problem has been solved as you can see it has been solved and we do now have an active state and inactive state which clearly shows us how this works properly so having a check mark is not the only thing that you can have it do you can also change the border of your button or the background of your button or whatever style that you want using the condition that i have just stated in this tutorial so i hope this video was very useful if it was don't forget to smash that subscribe button give this video a like and also turn on your notification to be alerted of future videos like this thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial